Shalom Aleikum, Shalom Aleikum, peace be upon you. This is Greg Ferguson, a.k.a. Shamar Yahoo. Welcome back to another lesson. This time we're going to be talking about the threefold nature of man. So, let's get it in. So, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 tells us that, uh, do you not know that you are the temple of Yahuwah and that the spirit of Yahuwah dwells in you, right? Let's talk about that temple. All right, so this is a recreation of the um, second temple that was built in Jerusalem. Uh, if you notice, it has three parts. This first part is known as the outer court. This second part in here is known as the inner court. And this third part is known as the Holy of Holies. Now, this section right here is where the, the giant veil was, um, where the Ark of the Covenant was. That's where they made the sacrifices and got um, the atonement for Israel. Um, only the high priest can go in there. You, you didn't want to be in there if you weren't a high priest. You know, it would be detrimental to you. So, this is a recreation. Note that it has those three parts, much like what we're going to talk about. Okay, hopefully this is recording correctly. I'm having a little bit of technical di difficulties here, but um, so in Hebrews four and twelve, uh, note I'm sorry, note that that uh, the temple had three parts. Okay, note that he keeps that the temple also represents the Most High Himself. You know, Yah in three persons. You know, it's it's this. Um, splitting of three aspects of themselves and we as um, images of the Most High we are also split into three parts and I'll show you what I'm talking about Hebrews 4 and 12 here uh, for the word of Yahuwah is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword this verse should seem pretty familiar to you but uh, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart of the heart so we see here you hear people um, use soul and spirit interchangeably but they're not the same thing okay and uh, I'll show you what I mean here um, as we go along but you see that soul and spirit are two different things it's two different parts of uh, the human the man right so let's keep going all right in Genesis 2 and 7 we see the uh, CSA and Yahweh Elohim form man of the dust of the ground and breed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul now take note of that a living soul by contra uh, by con contradiction it can mean ah sorry by uh, comparison you can have a dead soul right so what was it that he was breathing into um, Adam that made him a living soul instead of a dead one in John 20 and 22 says and when he had said this he breathed on on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit so in John right here this is Christ after the resurrection um, with his with his disciples and he breathes on them and tells them receive the Holy Spirit well we know that Christ is yeah in the flesh so what you're seeing here is that that breath that he's breathing into him is the Holy Spirit. And that's what he breathed into Adam. That's what allowed Adam to have eternal life if he had never sinned. 
was that Holy Spirit. So he was body, soul, and then the most I breathed into him, the Holy Spirit. So those are his three parts, body, soul, spirit. Just like I said, what do we have? Body, soul, and spirit. And to confirm this, we can go, I'm sorry. And to confirm this, we can go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and we see, now may the Elohim of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach, or our Lord Yahushua HaMashiach. Master really is what that means. Um, so we see that we have confirmed that we are a three part, a threefold um, being where we have body, soul, and spirit. So I know this looks a little complex, but this is what I'm talking about. We'll go over each part of this um, uh, this diagram right here, but this explains the threefold nature of man. Okay, you see that you have a body realm, a soul realm, and a spirit realm, and going from the outside in. So what we're going to do is talk about how our five senses touch here uh touch hearing smelling tasting seeing see how our five senses um make us uh experience different things at different realms okay so let's talk about it So the touch gate, right? So in the body realm, with the touch gate, we have our hands or you know feet, whatever. Um, but our hands uh, explore the natural or carnal world around us, right? That's the body. So in the soul of our in our soul, our soul searches out the touch for the possibility of opening its gate to affection. So the soul seeks to turn it into, turn that touch into affection in our soul realm. And then the spirit attempts to amplify or give life to the affection and turn it into worship. So starts to discern whether it should amplify that touch into worship. So that's how your touch gate works. So the ear gate, forgive me, uh, the ear gate, you have the body realm, which is uh, your ear, which picks up all the natural sounds around you, obviously, right? But what your soul will do is internalize those sounds and uh, commit them to your soul memory, thus creating a personality, right? And we'll talk about, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Let me finish up this. Um, this point in the spirit realm we have uh, the spirit will then discern which memories should be held in reverence so which it prioritizes those memories into into what should be held in the highest regard and what shouldn't right now going back to that so we we have a there's a little special note that I want to make about the soul if you ever wondered, you know, where is it? You know, what is it? So go to Leviticus 1711. And um, what you'll see in the King James or in the English version, you'll see for the life of the flesh is in the blood. But really, when you actually look in the, at the Hebrew, that word life is actually the word nefesh, which actually is soul. So what it's really saying is that the soul of the flesh 
is in the blood. And then you read the rest of that um rest of that verse. It says, And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So if you were <coughs> forgive me, if you were ever wondering you know, where your soul resides, it's in your blood, which is why blood is needed uh, for sin. Because it has to, it has to make atonement, right? We talked about that before. So your smell gate. So if we look at uh, the body realm, obviously your nose will pick up um, the worldly smells around you. Right, all the smells around you, and then the soul realm will put those smells uh, to or pulls those smells in to influence things like consciousness, intentions, emotions. Uh, for example, we see in Genesis eight twenty one, it says, "And the and Yah smelled. I'm sorry, and Yah was smelled a soothing aroma." Then Yahweh said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living creature, every living thing as I have done. So you see the influence of the smell even in the most high. We are the image of him. So it would make sense that we would work uh, much in the same manner. So, in the spirit realm, the uh, the spirit reads into the conscious to create or destroy, create or destroy hope. So, you know, you have a that good soothing smell and that, you know, calms you, brings your emotions down, or you can have a bad smell that will bring your emotions up and end up destroying you know, any kind of hope. So that's how your smell gate would work. The taste gate, all right? So this is a two-way gate, okay? The mouth is a two-way street. Um, it can bring in, you know, things like food and drink, and it also lets out things like words. Right. So in the <clears throat> in the soul gate, in the soul realm, sorry, um, it takes both input and output, using it, um, taking them in and reasoning them in the soul. Right. And an interesting example um, of both things happening at once would be when John was told in his vision to ingest you know, a scroll when he said it tasted um, sweet at first and then bitter, you know, he's, you know, ingesting words and, you know, he'll be speaking those words as well, you know, but that's just, you know, that that scroll ended up um, convincing his soul to do things. And it made him understand things in the spirit. So spirit will use those words from the mouth by way of our reasoning soul to invoke power from or connection to the spirit world through prayer. So this is why you got to be careful with your words, right? Because you could be calling on, invoking the power of something else besides the most high, all right? So we got to be careful with that output of words. The sight gate. This is the most. This is the most influential gate. I won't say the biggest, but the most influential gate, because the vision takes in so much of the world around you. This is an extremely dangerous gate to play with. Okay. In the soul realm, right, the soul brings in those visions and begins to further them into imaginations. So you can see where that might become a problem, right? 
you know, things like, um, you know, sexual innuendo or whatnot brings it in your uh, vision, your sight gate brings it in and then your soul begins to uh, further them into imaginations, maybe things that you shouldn't be doing, right? So, but the spirit realm will then, the spirit will take those imaginations and discern where it is that it wants to place faith, all right? So you got to be careful um, with your uh, with your sight gate, you know, bring imaginations and be placing your faith in the wrong thing. All right. And this is why Yahweh wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. All right. So if you notice him saying that he is reversing how you should be, um, dealing with everything. So for instance, in the sight gate, you know, he wants you to walk by faith, which will walk by faith, which will um, align your imaginations to the correct thing, which will more than likely steer you away from things that you shouldn't be seeing. So if you reverse the order of your gate, then you'll be living in accordance with the most high. You know, if you walk if you do things according to spirit then it will align your soul and your soul will align your body so that's why we understand why we should be understanding things spiritually why we should be doing things according to the spirit You want proof here it is Romans 8 and uh, starting at 13 for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the things of the deeds of the body you will live for as many as are led by the spirit of Yahuwah these are the sons of Yahuwah so he is telling us that we need to walk according to the spirit we need to be led by the spirit instead of leading by the body I know that, you know, in our flesh, that would be our normal way of thinking, would be bringing it in by the flesh, bringing the input in by the flesh, and letting it come into our soul and then affect our spirit. But it needs to be reversed. If we are led by the spirit, then we will have our soul aligned, and then our body will be aligned as well. So... <laughs> So as you can see, you know, the, this is how your, how our nature works, our threefold nature through all of our, um, through all of our senses. And you notice that the word, just like it says in Hebrews 4 and 12, we talked about, um, you know, the word of, the word of Yah, uh, cuts like, uh, or is sharper than any two-edged sword cuts right down to the division between the soul and the spirit between joints and marrow and it, it it cuts through all this so that we can have an understanding of how we should live how we should uh, act how we should do things okay that's my lesson I hope you were blessed by it uh, I hope to see you the next time I love you all. Shalom.